So, um, like the question I asked you guys at the top of this, <laughs> what were your fucking comic shops like today? <laughs> oh, they were good. Oh, they I were meant, good. Okay, I yeah. meant to say, yeah, I found it in the same location. It wasn't Narnia. Uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, been Narnia, <laughs> and uh, my buying experience was good. I have to tell you, these killer bee covers are killer being my wallet. Which ones? Um, the Superman one was great. The Batwoman one was great. Um, the Wonder Woman. The Wonder Woman was great. Did is that the one Batman I just said? I was, was just great. talking about that when I got home today. Um, the Bat one, uh, Batman, the Batwoman one especially. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not even reading the fuckers because I don't Me have either. the capability to, but they're just fucking works of art. This week on First Issue Club, Extremist One and the Forgotten Queen, number one. All right, y'all. We're back, baby. It's another episode of the First Issue Club, the weekly comic book podcast where we talk to you about first issues that came out to your comic book stores this week. It's fun to get around the table with my friends and chat about all these great new stories that came out and get their take, see what they thought. And I'm so full right now, and I can't wait to hear what my friends Budgie King, Greg, Caitlin have to say about this week's comics. Of course, I'm Mike DeStacy. Let's open the conversation up. Hey guys, how's it going today? I feel like I'm in a dreamscape. <laughs> it's it's going well. I feel very calm. Yeah, it was a it was a fine day today, and I feel a lot better now. Yeah, I, can I see feel everyone's very aura. thankful. Yeah, you know, for some reason, I do feel thankful yeah. as well. Namaste. Yeah, namaste, I think is how it's pronounced. Yeah, well, okay. I thought it was namaste. (laughs) No, (laughs) masty. Nah, (laughs) masty, nah. (laughs) Miss Janet is (laughs) namaste. She's doing the namaste again. Uh, How are your comic shops today? (laughs) Were were they normal? Did you find them as they normally are? Um, I found them in the same location, Mm -hmm. and um, thank you. Thank you. No, thank I'm you. okay. <laughs> no, I, 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 I have to explain I, I got just what happened. You want a coaster? I wanted a coaster, yeah. and I I made a sign that said "Don't fuck up" <laughs> for myself. <laughs> and I turned, I I placed it on like a little holder, and I placed it in a way to get a coaster. Then now it's pointing towards Budget King, and it says "Don't fuck up." I'm not gonna fuck up now. We all need that reminder. <laughs> I think I did that on purpose. Greg has an alarm on his phone every day that says that. I, I, it's not it's not a joke. I feel kind of <laughs> sad that you need it. No, it's it's not it's not. Don't fuck up. It's um, don't suck today. Oh yeah. Oh, well, that's, that's worse. No, it's not. <laughs> How? It's inspirational because it it, yeah. it takes one moment to decide: Am I going to treat this day good or bad? And every morning I tell myself: Don't suck today. Don't be the person on the road that gets too angry and yells at someone and ruins someone Ooh. else's day. Don't be the person in the bagel line that. Um, is on their phone and not looking at the cashier in the eyes. Wait, I lo- I love that. I like it too. I don't I don't like how it insinuates that your normal state yeah. is suck though. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Oh, I, I- am suck though. <laughs> <laughs> I have a mantra that I sing to myself every day that's similar. Yeah. What is it? It goes like this: um, Everything you do comes back to haunt you. Never make a mistake. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're setting that level pretty high. The bar's way up there for you. Yeah, I just don't want to fuck up anything. I normally I do this a lot with old back issues when I'm cruising those. I buy those solely based on cover. Mm-hmm. But I almost never buy new comics that just have a cool cover. Really? Um, long I'm, time ago, I used opposite. to hit the dollar bins and do that. Totally, that's why one of my favorite things to do. We'd spend an afternoon just flipping through those and wasting twenty bucks. When we're yeah. trying to budget, I'm not allowed to go in with Greg <laughs> because that's all I do. Is I'm buy like, the pretty this covers. This one looks cool. This is a great design. That's actually a great way to buy comics. Yeah. And sometimes he's like, "It's not number one," and I'm like, "I'm getting it in the two issues behind it." So get ready. <laughs> yeah. She goes. Yeah. She goes ham. It's like, it's like you know that show when. Uh, uh, you were a kid where you could go into like 
Toys R Us and you have 20 minutes to grab as much as you can. <laughs> yes. That's Caitlin. Mm-hmm. Every time she goes to the comic book <clears throat> shop, she feels like she has unlimited cash and a, a, I... a limited amount of time <laughs> to get as much as she possibly can. <laughs> It's like supermarket sweep. I get, yeah. I get, yeah. I get like my arms full, and then I go, and then I have a lot of buyer's remorse because it's usually real, real expensive. Thank but, God they don't give her a basket because she would just mm-hmm. go around like plucking, like plucking like fruit from like a a, a grocery store. I'm excited. I'm always excited about the comic books that I buy until I've entered the portal of my home. <laughs> and they immediately become uh-huh. chores. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Like now, I, now it's like a daunting stack of things I have to like accomplish. Yeah. Got to bag and board them. Got to read them. Got to yep. scan them. Got to scan them. Got to organize them. Mm-hmm. Got to potentially resell them and then find out that they're not worth anything. <laughs> I, I always have to really remind myself that like if I've stopped enjoying a series mm-hmm. and I just don't want to read it anymore, I can stop. <clears throat> it's okay. It's just, we're all just such complac- completionists by nature that it's hard to flick that switch in your head to just say, you're done with this. Don't buy any more. Don't read it anymore. You don't enjoy it. You just got to give yourself that permission mm-hmm. and ask yourself if it sparks joy or not. And oh, if it doesn't, yes. thank, Mrs. You. Kondo. thank, thank you. it for it. it's thank time you. in your home. Thank but you. you can let it go. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank here's the thing. You, thank you. I, I get what you're saying, like, Mm-hmm. I, I could quit any series I want. Yep. But, but then you're like, I got half a series. But then you quit here. and you sucked. Well, yeah, but we also have a direct <laughs> uh, effect on the creators in their lives. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's almost like uh, more personal when we're just like, we don't want to read this anymore. And those people feel it in their wallets like, ah, oh, god damn, we if, lost another one. If I had to look them in the eye as I stopped picking up their series, I, w- I would not. Uh, there's a few series that I would gladly look them in the eye. I think I would go, like... I'm not going to get this anymore. <laughs> and it's because of you. Oh, no. White Widow. <laughs> I didn't even read White Widow. You guys, Greg would not do that. He no, would he totally wouldn't. chicken no. out. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take five more. I mean, <laughs> please. I need to give it to my friends because I loved it so this much. Is, I want to share. Do you guys have this problem at conventions? And oh, I'll, I know, I know I'll, I'll preface this with that the fact that I like to do the thing I'm about to describe. Describe because you're supporting people, right? But everyone you walk by and make eye contact with, they've spent months of their lives working on their comic book and they paid however much to sit at a table and hawk it to people, and nobody's buying it. And once I start a conversation with somebody and ask what their deal is and why they've started, I just like have to give them, yeah, five, ten bucks for their yeah. thing. And then by the end of the day, I've spent like a hundred and fifty dollars <laughs> on, on shit like you don't want homemade Not comics, including the stuff that you bought yeah. that you were there to buy. And and given I th- that's that's a that's a really cool way to go to a convention and just like support people. But at the same time, you think like, oh, one hundred and fifty bucks. I could have bought an original page from an artist yeah. that like I really like. Yeah, for that amount of money. I don't have that problem as much at big cons, but zine cons, it's terrible. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, no. Well, the funny thing is is that there's a really cool zine con in Kansas City. We actually table at it. Yeah. And. Had a great time. Yeah. It was amazing. I mean, it's terrible. When I said it was terrible, I meant in a good way. Like, But I just, I'm losing so much money just because every single person I see, I'm like, uh, this has a genuine nature to yeah, it. Yeah, you're rad. You're doing cool things. Yeah. I want to get what you're doing. Well, one thing. So my dad, I had a cool experience of hanging out with my dad and looking through comic books this weekend. Because he's kind of was like, which is a very valid question. What do you do with these once they're in plastic and in a box? And I was like, oh, you you go through them and like see what you have occasionally. Um, but we went through like a bunch of stuff. And he was asking me like what my most valuable things were. And I said, you know, I could tell you, I could probably tell you what they are. But I, I would speculate a lot of the things that I have are the most valuable are zines. Um, you think so? I think I think I have some very rare zines, but the the market for who is actually going to buy them and know what it is that they're buying yeah. is not going to necessarily line up to be like on eBay. Uh-huh. Like it would have to happen at a con for them to like know. Or it's I, just like six people on eBay. Who yeah, know that I have this, and this is technically the first issue of this before it got to like whatever. You know, like, the Matt, the Matt Fury that I have is, like, whatever. Like, mm-hmm. I think people could identify that and figure out what that is. But then I have a bunch of random zine-famous people Yeah, that 
like I I got in at a Kansas City Con actually. I found a guy that was like doing this. That was his thing. Was like dealing in zine trades, and he was like, "Bring me." Like I was just kind of naming stuff, and he was like, "Bring me all of that. I'll buy it all right now." Um, he was just like losing his mind. <laughs> but it's like he's one of whatever hundred people that were there that in all those ninety nine other people had no idea what it was. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mike, what news were you gonna do? You you told Did us I this, have news? No, you told us the stat before we started recording that threw my for a loop. Six million books were sold last Wednesday? No, not last Wednesday. Uh <laughs> that okay. would throw me for a loop as well. That was like that's a lot of paper. No, getting no, pushed. no. So Comic Book Resources uh releases Diamond's financials that they post. Okay. And you can get an idea of like what kind of market share Marvel has, DC has, how many units oh, they sold, cool. what comics sold the most, and there were a couple surprising things on there that I thought were kind can of I, can I interesting. Guess? Go ahead. Who do you think sold the most comics? I would have to go. I'll actually go with DC. Marvel had forty-five percent share of comics sold in January. DC had thirty-seven percent share. Wow. I thought this was the, for the whole year of 2018. I didn't realize it was January. Oh, so your answer would have changed? <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, I would have said, I would have said more. Never be. Yeah. Okay, so, so you were saying six Jesus million Christ. books were sold in January? Six million books were sold in January. This That's is correct. still a fucking that is lot. Like, that is an insane amount yep. for a dying that. industry. Yeah, like, is it maybe not as dying as we... Well, and that I was say th- I say that with air quotes around it because it doesn't feel that way to me, but yeah. So they allotted this by the top three hundred comics. So whatever the three hundred most popular comics were last month, those three hundred issues accumulatively sold six million four hundred thousand copies. Jesus. So wait, fuck. there's still eighteen percent. So the next largest share is image. Next largest share is image. You're right. Six percent. And then we start to really go down to small percentages. Dark Horse? IDW, then Dark Horse, then Boom, Dynamite, Archie, Oni, Valiant, Titan, Red Giant, Aftershock, Action Lab, Abstract, Coffin, Xenoscope, and then Too Small to Count. Mm -hmm. Oni does better than Valiant. Last month they did. Okay. It's more than I would have thought would have sold in a month. And when you think about... Especially for January. An average price of probably $4 per comic. Right. That's... Pretty good amount of money. <laughs> so that leads me to think that maybe the industry itself isn't dying. It's just that we have too many options for comic book shops, and those jagweeds don't know how to run a business, and so they're going under. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Harsh. <laughs> I mean, there, there's but way. Maybe. There's a ton of comics being printed more so than before. Yeah. Hard sales of books is actually up. Right. Um, which is hard to believe. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yes, the common denominator here would be the store is fucking up. Well, if you're listening to this and you <laughs> have a dying store, you got no one to blame but yourself. Budget King, do you want to guess what the top-selling comic book was? Of January? The top two. There was one Marvel book in the top two and one DC book in the top two. Ooh. Did we cover them? Any of them? No. Because one is one did. is Harley Quinn twenty three, right? No, or twenty two, or something like that. Ooh, he said no. Oh, dang. Okay, so um, confident. What was that about? What was that, that issue? It's that it fucking sold out. It was just this random cover, this Killer B cover uh-huh. that went nuts, and then it was a costume that made a first appearance, and it's like been oh. sold out for days. Okay. It, well, I, you gotta might think have also, they probably don't print as many. That might have been a low print run. Harley Quinn, yeah. as okay. they do other other. Copies. Um, let me think. Okay, there's n- no way you can conceivably guess the number one comic book. Can you? Yeah, because we already told. <laughs> yeah, we already know. Oh, damn. We hang out <laughs> aside from you. <laughs> we, we have a meeting once a week. We don't. What call are we gonna you. stump budget? Yeah, king it's this called. Week? It's the stump budget king yeah. meeting. Was it printed in January? I mean, no, I it was think that's printed the, in. The seventies. Well, that's the rule, right? <laughs> this is com- this is comic oh, books. Is it Batman Who Laughs? Mother, holy fuck. shit! Number two. Okay. Yep, Batman Who Laughs. Number two. God mm-hmm. damn. Well that done. Is we didn't stump him this well time. Well done. Guys. That is impressive. 
Okay, what's uh, the Marvel one? That little noise that you made <laughs> to show your pleasure the, with yourself. That Ugh. was the Jeff Goldblum. Disgusting. Mm, yes. <laughs> mm, yes. This one seems more obvious. It's not Avengers, right? Nope. I don't know. Gives up. He gives up. Hey, we stepped in. We stumped the budget king. Well, now you got to tell him. Rumpelstiltskin over here. He went from gold bloom to Rumpelstiltskin. Give us our baby back. It is Captain Marvel number one, the new series. Oh, okay. Interesting. A dodoy. Sexist. I contributed to both of those sales. I think I have the final suggestion of what we do next. Okay. And that is that we get this podcast. I it. Oh. You stole it. <laughs> Man, for being the guy that's always like you're stealing things from people. You just. You ah, just it's my fucking turn. You did. <laughs> just, you ran up and <laughs> took the ice cream cone right from the guy's hand. And Go ahead and do it. Go it. ahead and do it. Let's get the podcast God. started. Oh, yeah. Damn, it took so long. You did. That was really on you. Well, let's get it started. Damn it. Damn it, 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 this is in a world beyond sex, love, and pregnant women. It's evolved past non-mutant and mutant conflict, and this X team it, that we're following is tasked with bringing in the transgressors in this perfect society. Can somebody explain to me, though, what is so funny about a baking sheet? I hated that. <laughs> oh, I was so annoyed by this. I don't get it, unless it is just not that funny. Yeah, is it well, like an inside joke with the author and her friends? It almost seems like it. What yeah. we're referencing is a conversation between Iceman and, is it Psylocke? That's Jubilee. Jubilee. Yeah, she had, it almost looks like her hair is pulled back, so I got kind of confused. Yep. To yeah, Iceman is losing is his goddamn mind about what the over name how of funny this is. Baking sheet is so or he, wax paper. Sheet. So, okay, the, the explanation that I had for it is that he's high. That's the only thing that would make sense to me. Because he's laughing point. so hard about it. Like, he's really, like, getting a little chuckle off. So the other thing that I thought, though, is that at one point Jubilee says there's something up with him, and he is getting really insulted when they're talking about these retrogrades, which I assume are people that were mutants born before the society was kind of cultivated the way it is. I and I wondered if Iceman was a retrograde and there was, was actually something wrong with him. I thought it referred to mutants that um, have sexual desires or have, like, a, a sexuality. But why do they call them retrogrades? Yeah. They're, so I think you're both right in some weird way. Cause I, I maybe you also read it. Because I, I, think really this, I think this comic book is a lot about, like, sexual relationships between X-Men, and I think that is something that's frustrating him, um, and he's trying to, like, figure that out as well. But then I think I don't know what the retrograde refers to though. I was I had to go back and figure out like why is he pissed off about this word? Yeah. Maybe retrograde because uh that refers to when, like going backwards, right? Yep. So they and in this world that we're in now, Age of X Man, they have evolved. Mm -hmm. They don't need sex, they don't need love or marriage because they are all now hatched. And so retrograde would that oh. refer to like a state of mind that they have since evolved from. Yes, you're right. That we no longer need carnal desire. I like Which I, I will take all the carnal desire. Jesus Christ. Is that the only people who mouth. are transgressing, though? It makes it seem like there are a bunch of people, and this team is, like, always dispatched to deal with them. Is it only the people that are out there having sex? I think it's sex and just general tomfoolery. Because they also mentioned when later on we find that these two uh, mutants that are having sex with one another, they freeze them and take them back to get their minds wiped. Uh, Iceman mentions because one of the X Men, one of the, one of the mutants is pregnant, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. This is the first pregnancy that's happened in generations because they don't have sex anymore. They're hatched or what the fuck ever. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Iceman it's says... It's a whole thing. <laughs> this, this could potentially be the first pregnancy and first murder. Well, but that's because they can't wipe her mind now because they don't know what it's going to do. She's in a condition. And also because hospitals don't even have the setup anymore yeah. for people to have pregnancies... And given that this is probably going to be high risk, I think that's what he meant. The other thing is that if you freeze a person, don't you think it would terminate their their pregnancy? Oh, and kill them, period. Right, because if, <laughs> if it's going to hurt that person, then it would hurt the baby. If it doesn't technically hurt that person, then yeah. it might not be hurting the baby. I guess we, we're assuming just mutants are immune to being completely frozen. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking this is like a cryo thing where okay. Iceman can freeze it so well that you're just kind of asleep with your eyes open. You're not like frozen. I don't know. Because <laughs> yeah. like if you're pregnant, you can't, you're not even supposed to go in a hot tub. Here's, here's, if you're pregnant, you're not even supposed to be... Uh, below 29 degrees outside. Yeah. Like, so if you live in a state that has a winter, you gotta move. Yeah. If you're pregnant. Yeah, especially if you're immune. Mm. (laughs) 29 degrees? It seems oddly specific. If you're pregnant, you can't eat cylinder food because it will poke the baby in the eye. All right, there we go. (laughs) Yeah, I need to read these websites. (laughs) So, what do you think is gonna happen to the baby, though? I was curious as if do you guys had any theories. That seems like borned. a big deal for X Men. It will be born. It does. It is the, a very big deal. This was such a heavy conversation. That's why I I was so annoyed by the top half of it that the end of this almost blew me away. Yeah. <laughs> like way more in contrast to how stupid the book was to start. <laughs> like that's a heavy subject matter. They're, I'm super intrigued where they go with it. Yeah. Same. I mean, I don't think Iceman ever sobers up, but the rest, what happens to yeah. them is like. Mm-hmm. Much more heady in terms of this is going to be a big thing for their whole. Can I get some clarity world. on this from you guys? A couple of questions that I have. I'm sure uh, I have the answers. Sure. I can't wait um, to be the smart one. Thank you. <laughs> what What is their job? What do they do? They keep mutants in line. In line from doing like their code of where does the they're the, the sex police. Where does their law of <laughs> I don't think it's come? just sex. I think I, honestly, I think it is. Wait, so mutants can't have sex? You no. Rogue, love, it's love, is, love is outlawed. Rogue and Gambit can't fuck. No, they mm-hmm. don't want to. They've evolved their the way of thinking. We were also to assume. I don't think it's just sex because it's is says, that just in this realm or all X Men or or like wrongdoing? Yeah, it's like if if you're if you're turning into a, a butthead, they just <laughs> zap your brain and you reset in this kind of like Dang. altruistic society. Um, I would love like stickers the moral with moral like, police. Wait, are you being? Like, are you saying that X Men outside of this X Man never have sex? No, no. Got no, it. No, this, no, 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 no. This world here. X Men have sex. Got they it. actually have sex often. Yes. It's like the goddamn Olympic, Olympic Pavilion. Village. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Like they are fucking smashing and grabbing. You guys both have the same point of reference for boning a lot. Yes. Yeah. That's, it's somebody. I found that that's, a little I, strange. No offense. That, <laughs> yeah, totally. That's guys, probably like somebody who just doesn't fuck that much. I I assume. <laughs> That you fantasized about the Olympic. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> oh, their stories, baby. You get yeah. on any kind of uh, yeah. chat room. That's Ooh, the, that's chat, the chat room. Yeah. I imagine. I imagine like, uh, is her name Lindsay Vaughn? Is that her name? Hope Solo. Yeah, there you go. Um, what? It's just yeah. Having they're all sex. Yeah. like just condoms everywhere, just keys and fish bowls. That's what the Olympics really Perfect. is. Yeah, sure. And that's why I love the Olympics. Okay, <laughs> so, and so what's your real question? So typically, okay, got it. Now I, under- now I understand what they do. Um, Blob, has he ever been a villain? <laughs> yeah. yeah. How did I know that this was going to come around to be he was the brother- about <laughs> Blob specifically? He was with the Brotherhood. Yes, and uh, but now he's good. It, well, they're, uh, good they're and evil don't good. exist. They're all on the same side now. That's got why it. Magneto's with yep. the X-Men right now. Okay, yep. okay. And who told it? Uh, blob, it was okay to wear a bomber jacket with no shirt underneath it. You know, you know, there's no question. carnal desires, which would also stand to reason that there are no like carnal disgusts. So maybe it's just fine. People don't care. Yeah, there's no reason to fat shame him. That's just his general state. <laughs> well, wasn't, wasn't fat shaming. Oh, really? 
I was just saying that in general, that's a weird look to do when you have a professional job to carry yourself. Could I mean, you imagine a guy coming to your work with, with just his... a Hawaiian shirt uh, unbuttoned? I can if he has the same facial hair that Blob has. <laughs> Wait, you're my CPA? <laughs> I think it's a cohesive look. Yeah, the handlebar mustache, the gold necklace, the shirtless vest uh, combo. He's definitely putting out an energy. Yeah. And that energy yeah, is... Yeah, if he was wearing, like, a turtleneck or, like, something... I bowl and I fuck. I wouldn't get it. <laughs> I bowl and I fuck. That's actually the bumper sticker that I have <laughs> on my car right now. Um, a lot of French in this book. We. Oui. The other question I had is the couple that they're chasing, she, like, turns into a rat, but her teeth have some sort of defense against her psychic sword. Psylocke, Psychic Sword, yeah. yeah. That was funny. Your teeth parry my sword. Yeah, she, but That's how? My favorite quote from yeah. the book. <laughs> she got <laughs> strong teeth. <laughs> does that mean she, does that mean there's like actually something special about these people aside from the fact that they've survived a couple of mind wipes and are still remembering each other? And yeah, they may other? have, they may be starting to build up some sort of like psychic immunity. Ooh. Yeah. Is what I'm wondering. That's interesting. Yep. Because it seems like the people who are uh, being forced into forgetting, if you're reading the other tie-in comics to this X-Men event, are the ones who like keep frequently coming back and back and back and back. So yeah. like the, the facade of this uh, utopian society probably isn't sustainable in the long run. Well, we ha- I think later on we find that there's actually a, re- a resistance building. There's like a, these mm-hmm. little... Uh, revolutionary groups that are trying to take on the X-Men and X-Man. What other books are they? Are these tie-ins just for people who are... Um, so we actually... the uh, Asking for a friend. The <laughs> uh, Glob book that you guys covered in your one-off... Uh, that you guys covered in your YouTube video. Uh-huh. Or did it ever get published? I don't think it did. I don't think so. Doesn't matter. Um, I don't know. We see... Next Gen? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yeah. In Next Gen, we see the extremists uh, doing stuff. Mm -hmm. Remember Blob is behind the house? Yep. He takes out this kid Mm -hmm. who's going to set a house on fire or something? I think so, yeah. Well, yeah, and then we have, like, we covered, did we cover the Amazing Nightcrawler? No. No, we didn't. Yeah, so that's a book, and Apocalypse (laughs) and the Extracts, and Prisoner X. Like, this is a big event. But a lot of these have yet to come out. Right, they're coming out in late March. Okay. Um, this is a big event that's going to have no bearing on the Marvel Universe. Yeah, by the end of it, it'll be wrapped up tight. Mm-hmm. Well, This will be a dream. Yeah, it's essentially all that it is, is a dream. But I like that they at least told us it was a dream to begin with, instead of being like at the end, surprise, it was a dream the whole time. <laughs> I like, do, that's I, a fun twist yeah. on that. Like, <laughs> I think burn all my goddamn comics. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, fuck these. Yeah. So I think, I think that's the reason why I... W- was kind of semi excited to read this is because they were bending a bunch of different rules um, and kind of making them like the X Files of like X Men mm-hmm. kind of, and then they put a really cool team together. Um, and I think that that's what's interesting about this event. I guess. Well, wait, when did they tell us it was a dream? Is this really a dream? I was just making a, a goof. Uh, I don't think it's expl- it's explicitly said that it's a dream, but I think it is. I mean, it definitely seems from the jump like this is not something that's going to continue or has real stakes on. Like this is all in the mind of X-Man and he's like gone crazy. Or yeah. So he's like meditating. Welcome to a perfect world. Everyone is a mutant, special, powerful, individual, no more strife, oppression, or de- dependence. The age of X-Man, a dream made real. There we go. A dream that must be protected at any cost. Okay. A dream made real. That's like eradicating racism like that's a real thing like a dream like he was oh man wouldn't this be great one day becoming real it did become real yes so they're not saying it's a dream i'm tripping out on what you're saying yeah. dude so here's the thing a hand can touch anything but itself <laughs> Whoa, wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> that had me for a minute <laughs> there's a gas leak in here do you I, need anything more, or are we on the same page now? I think we're on the same page. I, huh. So we're not on the same we, page. No, we are. We are on the same page. That <laughs> I guarantee you he's still thinking about if he can walk through water or not. 
<laughs> that I can prove. Can. <laughs> so the wave is still. <laughs> and I'm moving. <laughs> I'm going through the wave right now. Uh, I I, it's, a, it's a bummer if this is a dream. I do want some ramification here. Well, the, I think the ramifications are going to be when the X-Men return to the Earth, the mortal plane from wherever astral plane or uh, okay, so you're mind not... that they're existing within, they're going to have experienced this and they'll probably yeah. have like okay. some trauma and new relationships formed. And um, I, I, th- I think the bonds between the characters that are different from their real life bonds are going to be interesting to explore when all these characters come back. Okay, well, so what's you're it? saying they're all experiencing this at the same time, what's not it? just X-Man himself. No, so what happened was the Uncanny X-Men had this event where X-Man was trying to eradicate evil on Earth. Mm-hmm. And he was ultimately thwarted by Legion and a handful of other characters. And he essentially, God, this is such a tedious storyline. He essentially uh, found that there was only one way to truly um, live out his dream, which was to encapsulate all the mutants and take them to another realm. So that's where they are. So they're in this like made up realm that's mm. uh, that's like an earth of his creation. Do okay. you think though that part of, well, it would be kind of cool if part of their trauma or experiences coming back were that they were with all mutants and there was no like non-mutant That there could be some conflict. resistance towards man now when yeah. they come back. Yeah. That they've seen what life could be like. If people just let them be. Mm-hmm. Hmm. But you're also in this like facade and being lied but, to and there's this like evilness abound wait, in, so, the, but un, in this un, sort of society. Uncanny X-Men is still doing its thing. It right? is, but there's only a few mutants who weren't in a perimeter close enough to be zapped up into this space. So Scott Summers has returned from the dead, as Again. as has Wolverine, mm-hmm. and those two X-Men are still on Earth. And there's been a handful of other random characters that, like the X-Men that are in the sewers. Are you familiar with them? What do they yeah. call themselves? Um, uh, we is in fucking Eleven. We read it. Yeah. Uh, they're still around. That makes, okay... I didn't really There's like underground those fucking dots. They're like underground <laughs> societies of mutants. Yeah. Okay. Oh, fuck. Okay. <laughs> X-Men, you've done it again. You've confused the shit out of me. But that's on me because I keep buying the goddamn books. <laughs> I'm super into this event. When and Initially, when Greg told me that there were going to be like six books unfolding out of this singular uncanny run, I was pissed. I was like, I got this run that I really liked. And now they're splitting it up just like they did with gold, red, blue, black, all the X-Men colored teams. <laughs> Pause for burp. <laughs> yeah, gross. I'm just glad you didn't talk through it. Mm-hmm. But then I started reading a couple of them because we do a podcast about first issues. I think I buy all the first issues. <laughs> and I ended up being really stoked on the sidelines and storylines we were getting. Yeah. I don't. I still think I'm gonna try to avoid buying all of them just because it's. I'm gonna look back at how many issues this whole thing takes, and I'm. I'll, I'm gonna have spent like four hundred dollars on fucking Age <laughs> of X Man. Oh, uh, just wait I, for War of the Realms. I am God. into this Ugh. though, because of that X Files y Twilight Zoney thing where it's yep. like they're a trap. I'm. I'm just kind of. I'm into this story in particular. Yep. Next is Forgotten Queen, out on Valiant by Howard and Pinna. This is a period piece, but it's also three out of four horsemen packed into a saucy witch's body who seems pretty content, if not a bit bored, by watching the world burn until she meets an attractive acrobatic archer. But that seems like it might not work out as the world's greatest love story, though, because we do get introduced to a present-day team excavating her armor from the ocean although she may not actually be dead or down for the count I cannot believe you got 
all of that storyline <laughs> into one concise little paragraph there. <laughs> that was really good. It was good. Is it too encompassing? Will we have enough to b- branch out on, you guys? There's plenty <laughs> to friggin' explore right so. there. <laughs> this tree has many branches, <laughs> and we will explore them all. Did anyone have a storyline that intrigued them more than the other? Uh, I kind of liked the boat shit that was going on, that they're, like, excavating these artifacts, and then there's this, like, megalomaniac uh, person that just wants all the artifacts and doesn't even care that somebody died. I think she's part of, like, some league that is in cahoots to maybe bring this woman back. Yeah, Uh, she's probably in a cult. I also like that the whole crew that she has hired has A, no idea what she's getting, (laughs) B, probably no idea that it might have magical powers. And see see, who the fuck is she? Yeah, they don't even know her name. Also, they don't like her. They're like actively trying to like (laughs) stop her from getting what she wants, even though she's funding their whole deal. Yeah, so that was a cool right for that. And then we got Genghis Khan. Pre-Genghis Khan. Yeah, and I just, I don't get down with Genghis. (laughs) One of the worst cons. Of all time. <laughs> What's your favorite con? So they the add- long con, <laughs> the comic, comic con. <laughs> yeah, probably the comic, <laughs> the wrath. Yeah, that's the what I was of. thinking. The wrath, the wrathful con. Um, <laughs> they, there's like a dig in there though <laughs> that like Genghis Khan has been mispronounced or yeah. misappropriated. Genghis or something like that. Or- yeah, yeah, and it was like. An entirely different name to start out with. Dingus? And they bring that joke it back up again. It was Dingus Khan. You're exactly <laughs> correct. It, so if a normal comic book had been like a lot of words and like pretty heady, and then it's like, and we're going to dip you into history, and you're going to go ha- and have to like explore this whole history with a whole new character, I would be like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> get rid. <laughs> get rid. Is there a butt yeah. coming? <laughs> There is a but. I, like, at no point disliked this comic book. I liked every storyline. I th- I found it interesting. Well, it it did a good job. Like, the backstory did seem like history for a little while, and then slowly it transitioned into its own narrative and not just filler backstory that complemented the, like, modern-day narrative. So at least it's two storylines. Yeah. I'm interested to, like, see them converge more and see what happens but I think I agree with your point earlier that I, I kind of found the modern day storyline much more intriguing and interesting so uh, she's like a witch right she's timeless she's been around since she saw Cain and Abel kill each other yeah. she's fought in what seems like every war <clears throat> they allude th- to the fact that they call her a witch just because they don't understand what she is and right. she's got magical powers <laughs> but right, she's ladies? like she's got the <laughs> what <laughs> Just, you know. No, no, no. The thing was, <laughs> they call her a witch because they don't understand her. That's a common thing that men do when they don't oh, understand a yes. woman. They gotcha. They belittle pe- them Correct. by calling them names. Now yeah. I follow. Yeah, yeah. I but I took the short route and I said, <laughs> right, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I needed the rest of you to keep up. <laughs> um, but like, what's the deal with Airline she? Food. In, she in. <laughs> <laughs> That's really We're good. not letting Caitlin get a word out. Otherwise, this whole no. I'm, I am. For- I've, I've done it several times too. <laughs> I've interrupted <laughs> Caitlin plenty this episode. <laughs> I like your nails, Caitlin. Thank you. Very cool. <laughs> she paints them to decompress. I do. <laughs> I use tape this time Ooh. to get a nice great, geometric actually. Yeah. shape. Um. Uh. And I got distracted by my nails now. Um, no, the the like apocalyptic things. Like she incites war, and she incites like the pestilence. Like she, I don't understand what they're trying to tell us she can do. Yeah, that's a good point. If there's a nod to her as like this ever present being or god of lore that we're supposed to be aware of, I missed it. The if- other thing is that this is in a valiant universe, and so we can't. Uh, omit the fact that either A, she's going to become a character in the Valiant universe, or B, she might be part of an existing lore. That's true. (laughs) We've covered (laughs) off on the fact that we don't understand Valiant very well. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, She's still down there in the ocean. Is that 
one of the least sold publishers, as we found <laughs> out. <laughs> I was going to say something, though. Like, throughout this book, there are several ads for comics that I thought looked really interesting. Valiant does that. They have a great marketing team yeah. that makes things look interesting. Charismatic. <laughs> are you <laughs> insinuating they are not interesting? No, there's no... Bu- they make them <clears throat> look interesting? <laughs> Here's my thing with Valiant. I Every book that we've read from Valiant is normally pretty good. Yeah. But they have detached and separated themselves from DC and Marvel and everything else and created this own camp and lore and mythology based around its characters solely that it is a little daunting to get introduced to anything Valiant because they're just like, you need to fucking pay attention or you're not going to keep up. Yeah, I I reviewed a Valiant book on our YouTube channel last week. Yeah, And one of the points I made about that was that with... Marvel and DC, you've got characters like Spider-Man and Superman, and my brain can fill in the blank on their mythos and surrounding yeah. universes. Right. When it comes to Quantum and Woody or some of these other characters that I'm not super familiar with and how, like, Archer and Armstrong fit into that world. Or, or Bloodshot, Man of Ninjack. War. Ray. There's so many characters, and I don't understand their relationships or their say that wrong? backstories. Yeah. So it just makes, even though the first issues are fun, they just throw so much at me that it's hard for me to get fully into or excited about a second issue of that thing. Yeah. Because I get through it, and it just there's just some tedium in explaining to me everything I need to know. Yeah. Meanwhile, trying to give me a good introductory story. It's a really tough thing to balance. So it's hard to onboard yourself into Valiant, I think. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I think it boils down to, like, when when you, when you we were kids, we didn't have Quantum and Woody bedsheets. We didn't have live wire <laughs> thermoses and, like... Mm-hmm. Uh, Faith hats. Yeah, like, they, they don't but do, I they don't, they don't do <laughs> any of that. Uh, I, well, fuck yeah, I would. I'd wear a Faith hat every day. Can, but, we, can we get Faith bedsheets? I yeah. think they have Faith PJs. We gotta oh, have boy. Faith. Oh God! I'm on one tonight. I am sorry. <laughs> it's good. Um, yeah. I agree. I mean, but those, I want to care about those characters. They look cool. They have some great writers, and they tout themselves as the like comic book world that is easy to enter. So they like are trying to get you into that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um. Every time they start a new arc, and so, I I don't I don't have beef with Valiant, but when Valiant expects me to know like little nuancey things about their world, I'm just like, eh. You I've know. always I've always seen Valiant as like uh we're the thinking man's comic book. <laughs> like when you're done smoking your pipe and listening to a opera singer, come to uh the uh, Valiant bookstore and pick up your weekly reads. I <laughs> Yeah, maybe. <laughs> they have some headier books for sure. They, they do, but then they also have some like like Quantum and Woody is definitely not Archer's or whatever. Archer and Armstrong. Yeah. Not supposed to be That's in- true, but they're not like Deadpool. Like mm-hmm. they're not they're not for a broad audience. Yeah. They're for a very specific niche audience, if you will. I kept on forgetting the title of it. <laughs> and it's in the name. <laughs> Mike D is about two minutes away from just packing all the shit up and leaving. I do think the room. That well, I've been a real pain in the ass this episode too. So I do think that you finally liked a period piece, though. That is true. Thank yeah, you. we got gotcha. you. <laughs> it had a heavy flow. We suckered you in. Oh man. What I was gonna say is, I think that she may be turned around, but by love. But I don't think that it's for good because she's still down at the bottom of the ocean. It seems like she's up to some bad shit. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know that she's like fully I, reformed. I do like that it's like she is just bad. And we're going to follow. Like you're not rooting for her. I don't know who you're rooting for and I like that. I don't even know that she's rooting for her. I mean, things are probably pretty gray mm-hmm. as far as like moral compass for we, her. We know the person looking for her is an asshole, but we don't necessarily know what her motives are. Like does she want to bring this person back to life or does she know she's bringing her back to life by like assembling her armor and finding her remains I think she knows that there's a magnetism to the pieces of armor that uh-huh. they're salvaging so uh, maybe yeah 
Because if you still if you still know there's a power contained in them. You know one cool thing about this book too that I was really impressed with is this would have been a prime target to make it a booby book and make her like overly voluptuous and all of that like Xena Warrior Princess kind of stuff. And they really kept that in check and just made her a good heroine. Mm-hmm. So I agree. Or she's not a heroine, I guess she because she's yeah. a villain, but <laughs> Um, a, a women creative team. Yep. And they, I actually, right before I read this book, there was an ad for C2E2, and the writer was featured as like one of the cool people that's going to be there. And she looked like like punk rock and cool. Yeah, she, she looked like goth. someone that we would yeah. like hang out with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Goth in a good Teeny. way. Goth like in a. Yeah, she wrote uh, Yukonot. Euthanauts. Euthanauts. Yeah, Euthanauts. She also wrote uh, Assassinistas. Oh, no shit, really? I think so. Oh, she yeah. is cool. So she does cool stuff. Yep. Um, I dug this book. I did too. Um, um, do we think Punk Mambo is worth mention? <laughs> nah. No. Nah? No. I mean, if we, if, sure. if we cover it, we, we cover it, I guess. Punk Mambo, Cullen Bunn, there's an extra book in the back of this. It's like a preview, right? Yeah, it seemed a little longer than a preview, though. We're not gonna put this in here. I yeah, I don't. I think if we liked it more, maybe did you we like would. it? I guess I didn't read it. I so. didn't read it. Uh, uh when anything you has didn't the take word a trip down Grunch Road, when anything I've, has the w- word punk in it, I don't read it. What are you gonna say, Caitlin? I wanted to like it because it's something that Colin Bunn did, yeah. and then I also wanted to like it because of the description of it. But actually reading it, I was not a big fan. I had a good time with you guys this week. Oh, finally mm. calmed down. Yeah. It was nice to get my thoughts on these comics off my chest, actually. Well, what I've thought about this week. And Did you have something to say, Budget King? I was kind of going on a roll there. and <laughs> Well, I was just going to I was gonna uh, compliment you. Yeah? Go I ahead. Th- I think you're good at talking about comics, and I want to thank you. Cool. For doing it. I want to thank you, too, for being a part of my life and being part of this journey with me today. And I'm going to be honest, Caitlin, yes. I want to thank you, too. You really walked us through these two comics, introduced them really well and concisely, and set us up to have great conversations. Greg, you brought the funny, man, and you do it every single week. You crack me up. Man, I just really want to thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, fucking thank you. Guys, let's say goodbye. Toss it out the window. Let your hair down. Say goodbye to this week and we can move on to the next, huh? What do you say? I'm Mike D. Bye, guys. I am Caitlin Rusick, and I will show myself out. Uh, this is Greg Lick Time. We have done many sign-offs, and this is the only time where I've felt the most uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Signing off. This has been a Budget King production. Thanks so much for joining it. Bye. All right, Dawson, let's go to the creek. First issue club podcast Talking about comics, making it fast Now we're jamming out to Independent and big too 